morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started today. My name is Chris Booty. I'm the Director of Corporate and Community Programs here at the Owens campus. I'd like to welcome, welcome you to our first annual social media conference. We have a phenomenal team of presenters here today, so I know we will all leave here excited and anxious to implement some of the strategies discussed. There are a couple of important items I'd like to bring to your attention. Today's agenda is uh, the green program that's on your table. So if you have any questions, please refer to that today. Out of respect to everyone attending the conference, please silence your cell phones. And the facilities are located on this side of the building, uh, along the outside of the hallway. Um, also, you'll see, notice on the back screen today, throughout the day, it's gonna be a live Twitter feed of the social media conference today, and then the three other screens will be for our keynote speaker. So throughout the day, if you have any questions, please uh, come up to me, let me know. And also, Kristen Bacon, Kristen, if you would stand, um, she'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. At this time, our campus director, Dr. Ileana Smith, would like to share a few remarks. Thank you, Chris. Well. Wow, welcome to all of you. I just want to take a couple minutes to tell you how excited we are uh, to do this kind of conference. Um, and it's a learning experience for a lot of us, but I want to begin by saying thank you to, like Chris said, a phenomenal group of presenters who will be sharing what they're doing. This is an opportunity for us to learn from each other. Uh, when we talk about social media, I mean, communication is the basis for everything that you're going to talk about today, and it is so critical to everything that we do. Uh, and no doubt, you know, social media has qualities that really make communication powerful. I mean, think about the immediacy, having all that feed going out as we meet today, um, that, that immediacy that's there, and that, uh, that reach that social media can have. Um, it is, you know, a remarkable tool, but we need to learn how to use it wisely. We need to learn how to use it effectively because no doubt it requires a time commitment uh, to manage that kind of strategy for all that we do. And that's what today is all about. And um, I just want to tell you that the college is committed uh, to growing this kind of programming. We want this to be the first of many. Uh, and we're going to need all of you uh, to continue coming together with us so we can advance this. The college is here to help our community, to help our businesses grow, and provide you the workforce that's needed for all of you to grow and prosper. And we want to do that well for you. We believe that this area is an important area uh, where we haven't really focused attention in the past, but we're ready to do that now, and we want to do it with your help. Please give us your ideas, your suggestions, and we're going to take them to heart and really move this forward. So I hope this can be the first of many, uh, and we want to keep you involved. And I want to thank my team for putting it together, uh, both Chris and Kristen and their staff. So have a great conference, and welcome to Delaware Tech. Everybody just uh, close your eyes and ignore the screen for a second here. You're not seeing the transition. You're not seeing the transition. <laughs> this is where I am. I spend most of the time in the home of the 21st century. This equipment here will allow him to carry on normal business activities without ever going to an office away from home. This console provides a summary of news relayed by satellite from all over the world. Now, to get a newspaper copy for permanent reference, I just turn this button, and out it comes. <laughs> when I've finished catching up on the news, I might uh, check the <coughs> latest weather. The 
this same screen can give me the latest report on the stocks I might own. A telephone is this instrument here, a mock-up of a possible future telephone. This would be the mouthpiece. Now, if I want to see the people I'm talking with, I just turn the button and there they are. Over here, as I work on this screen, I can keep in touch with other rooms of the house through a closed circuit television system. With equipment like this in the home of the future, we may not have to go to work. The work would come to us. In the 21st century, it may be that no home will be complete without a computerized communications console. Who can name the man? All right. And uh, one more video. John Reynolds is here. What up, John? Um, and he's going to announce a brand new social media platform called Twirler. Please welcome John Reynolds. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Uh, we are very excited to launch our new platform. I do have to ask you to turn off all your mobile devices, if that's okay. News of this won't break until 6 p.m., and we'd like to keep it quiet. It'd really be great if there was no sharing of information at all until... You want us to turn our devices off? <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, sir. I can't comply. I have got to be online.
I think that with these tools, we can actually change the way that we interact, change the way that, think, that people think about things and do things. I mean, you look at, at, at the possibilities that surround us, and all we do is just kind of wait for the media to tell us what to do, or wait for government leaders to tell us what to do, and we can do it all now. We don't have to wait on these people. We don't have to depend on them to provide leadership or permission or anything else. We can do it. We have the power. And these tools can help us. Now, I know for some of you, you're sitting here saying, yes, yes, I resonate with that. That, that makes sense. Yes, we can see a new society, a new, a new way of doing things. Others of you, I know, might be a little bit troubled by the idea. You might. You might say, no, I like the status quo. I don't necessarily want to see things change. You're right. Some of us don't like the status quo. Some of us don't like that. Some what? of us are opposed to that. I'm sorry, who, who are you? My name's, my name's Rob. Um, and I got to say, I'm, I'm a little comfortable with, with some of the things you're proposing. And yeah, you're saying, you're saying that we don't need some sort of filtration for our Well, I, I don't think so. I think, I think that the people of society can really rise up and, and things happen. We don't necessarily need to depend on government leaders or the media or anything else to tell us what to do. I think we can we can kind of take the lead on that. No, 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 no Ken Grant. You, you are a dangerous man. You <laughs> definitely need to be safe, no doubt. Uh, what, what are you doing, Rob? I'm going to make sure. Uh, Rob, I, 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 I don't think the police are going to care much about this. Police? I'm not, ah! We can be better than that. I'm not calling the police. No. You, you're not? No. Where are we going? <laughs> yeah, we were waiting for you. Hi, uh, Kelly. Uh, my name is Rob, and uh, I'm here with a speaker by the name of Ken Grant. You know him. Oh, I guess that's why I get to go visit the Mexico. I'm Kenneth. Yes. Yeah, how did you know that? Oh, uh, we're calling it Twitter feed here at the office. No. You are. Okay, well, I, I want to let you know that he's he's talking about things that aren't just about growing small businesses. Uh, is he talking about how we can have a better society if people use social media tools to step up and make things happen while the next public official is accountable? Y yes, how'd you know that? We've read 10 blog posts on the subject. We don't really like the idea. I would love to see more community involvement and leadership in all areas of our society. Okay, all right, well, uh... Can you tell Ken that we're... Y'all have to talk with Okay, all right, thanks for taking my call. We're, we're sorry. <laughs> she said how good conference can. Thanks, Rob. Rob, are you, are you okay with that? I suppose I'll have to be one. Right? Uh, well, Rob, trust me, if you stick around today, uh, you might just learn uh, how to use some of these tools to stop me. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Rector, give him a big hand for uh, being part of this. Uh, and, and I do want to uh, also say that the governor's office has been really supportive in, in uh, some of this stuff and, and working with the social media initiative here in Delaware. We, we are looking at really changing the way that people do things, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But right now, it's probably a good time to go over the disclaimer. Uh, read along, everybody. And, and really, let me hear you. Everybody, the views and opinions, come on. <laughs> okay, so we're all clear on the disclaimer. All right. Um, but what are we talking about here? Any fans? Come on, let's hear it. Free baits, come on, let's, let's. I'm not giving away any of the rest of season three for those of you who haven't caught up yet. Anybody familiar with Downton Abbey? Yeah. Okay. Now, a few years ago, if you had told me that the BBC was going to put out a series based in early 20th century life at a castle and, uh, you know, and that this would be one of the hottest things on television, I would have laughed at you, but, you know, clearly that's why I'm not a television programmer. Uh, but what we have here, for those of you who aren't familiar, this show starts covering things in 1912, shortly after the uh, sinking of the Titanic. 
and follows on through World War I. And what you see is people used to a certain lifestyle, a certain way that things operated in a hierarchy. And you see the changes coming, and you see those at the top of the hierarchy really struggling with this. How, how is it that our society is changing so quickly? And of course, we're sitting here looking at it 100 years later and going, wow, they didn't realize what an impact electricity and the telephone would have on them. Uh, and clearly we do. And this is, this is the kind of thing that you just need to keep in mind as these new tools and new technologies uh, come online and just uh, start taking over our society. And, but we can use them for good things. Does anybody know um, the Morse code? Do you know why Samuel Morse invented the Morse code? Does anybody know what Samuel Morse did for his day job? Samuel Morse was a painter. And he would uh, go out and paint portraits uh, in different areas. One time while he was in New England, uh, his wife fell ill. Messengers were sent to tell him. They got to him. By the time he made it back, it was too late. She had already passed. He did not get a chance to say goodbye to his wife. And he thought, there has to be a better way to communicate. There has to be a better way to get information from point A to point B than relying on a person on a horse. And that's when he came up with the Morse code. These things are happening all the time. We now have the ability to reach out and to touch every part of the world. Uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, uh, your photo was taken earlier this morning in here and uh, is now up on Chinese Weibo. <laughs> so there's uh, a billion folks in China who get to see your smiling faces now. Um, all right. So some basics, some things to do, some things to write in your books. These are two things that you need to do. You do these, you have your money's worth, I guarantee it. Okay, first thing, go to SethGodin.com, subscribe to his blog. Does anybody already subscribe to SethGodin.com? Okay, you're really smart people. Um, the rest of you, seriously, uh, Seth Godin is one of the most innovative thinkers in marketing today, I would argue, in many areas of life. Uh, Check out the blog, subscribe to it. Every day you'll get uh, a, a feed, whether it's uh, email, RSS, whatever. Seth Godin, G-O-D-I-N. Just go there, do it. If you've got your device on you, go there right now, do it. If not, as soon as you get home, do it. Just do it. All right, TED Talks. Anybody familiar with TED Talks? Good. Watch two TED Talks a week. I don't care what they are, watch them. You will expand your mind, you will change the way that you see some basic things, not only in business, but in life. Okay, so I give these talks a lot, and it's incredible to me that I'll get through talking about what we can do with these tools, and there seems to be like a very basic thing that people don't quite get, and, and business people especially, they just they have a hard time with this. Uh, human beings are social creatures. Given an opportunity, we like to be with people. I know there's times you want to be alone, there's times it's nice to go off to a cabin somewhere and spend the weekend by yourself, but for the most part, we like being around people. If we didn't, Starbucks would not exist. If we didn't, I, I, the, the, you know, we just we wouldn't be here. We'd all be sitting at a computer somewhere, just not interacting. You know, because, Let's face it, folks. Making your way in the world today, it takes everything you've got. <laughs> Taking a break from all your worries, it, it sure would help life. Sometimes you've got to go where everybody knows your name. And the thing is, it, in, in social media, everybody can get to know your name. And it's, 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 it's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And it creates these experiences that just, they're, they're, they're magical. Um, so, some basic takeaways. Uh, changes happening in society. Subscribe to Seth Godin's blog. Watch TED Talks every week. And being social is important. Write all these down. And give me the highlights, making it easy for you. Now, in case you haven't noticed, social media is an incredibly powerful tool. 
Um, and this leads into one of the other questions I get all the time. How much time do we have to spend on social media? How much time do we have to actually devote to it? I don't want to learn this stuff. I don't want to do this stuff. You know, can we do it? And, and believe me, there are people out there who will gladly take your money to do it for you. I wish I didn't have scruples. I just, somebody shared with me a proposal that they had. Someone said they would set up their blog, their Facebook feed, their Twitter feed, and post like three things a month for $15,000 a year. And I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. I, I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I can't do that. I can't take that kind of money from people for doing so little. And, 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 and of course, the real frustrating thing is that if you do that, if you just pay somebody else to do it, which I, I know you're going to hear from people today who you can pay to do these things. And they're wonderful people, and I advise you to listen to them, and I advise you to work with them, and if you want to use them for consulting purposes, if you want to engage with them so that they actually do this stuff for you, fine, good. But at the same time, get involved yourself. Discover the magic yourself, and it is magic. It is, it's an incredible way that we can communicate and work with people. So when it comes down to you know, how much time you spend, there was a time, and I've, I've done this, I, I, I've, I've spent the last year going on my repentance tour. Because before a year ago, I would stand up here and lie through my teeth. I became a used car salesman. No offense to used car salesmen. But I would say, oh, yes, you can do social media just a few minutes a day. It's no big deal. You know, it's uh, blah, blah, blah. Baloney. And understand, we are talking about the most powerful tools humanity has ever seen. We are talking about things that have destroyed dictatorships and created communities. This is the fire that Prometheus stole from the gods and brought to humanity. And no, you can't do it on five minutes a day. It takes some time. It takes time to develop relationships because that's essentially what we're talking about. We are not talking about just, oh, I went on the computer and I pushed buttons and I don't know, something happened. We are talking about connecting humanity here. And that's, once you, once you understand that, I actually, I, I, I talked to a small business group one time and, and kind of shared kind of a big picture view of, of where we're going, what we're doing and everything. And at the end, this guy said, you know, you gave me absolutely nothing useful to work with. And I, I said, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Let's, you know, let's see if we can remedy that. What, do, what are you looking for? And he's like, well, I don't understand why I don't have more Twitter followers. I said, okay, let's take a look at your, 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 your Twitter setup, your, your Twitter page. And I noticed um, he was following three people. And I said, well, okay, right away, you're sending a message that you're not interested in really engaging with people. You don't, you don't really care about people. So, you know, why, why should they follow you? He goes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm providing great information. I'm like, that's great, but you're still not, you know, you're not connecting with people. He says, why would I want to do that? And he, like, got up in my face. I mean, he was, he was like, really angry. I thought he was going to punch me. And, uh, and, and I thought, wow, this is, this is all people. I mean, I'm sure that the stuff that he was offering in his business world was quality stuff, was useful, but if you don't want to be dealt with that way, then you don't deal with people that way. Um, you know, that's, that's the thing that you have to understand with social media. It's not going to fix your problems. If you have a fundamental problem with customer service, if your product is garbage, social media is not going to do anything for you. Um, <clears throat> so, about this uh, idea of tools, powerful tools, and using them well. Everybody get the image? <clears throat> Um, it can hurt if you don't use it well. And we've got some uh, great examples just, uh, just recently. Does everybody know about Applebee's? The Applebee's controversy. The Applebee's meltdown. Anybody follow this? Okay, a few weeks ago. Um, this all started in St. Louis. Uh, There's a group of people came into Applebee's, they ate. At the end, the server gave them the check, uh, and with you know, as is customary practice for anybody who's been in the restaurant industry, you get a large group of people, six or more, you automatically throw in the 18% tip. 
And uh, this person said, no, I'm not paying the 18%. Something along the lines of what, I, I only give God 10%, why should I give you 18? Uh, and scratched out the tip and everything. Well, one of the other wait staff saw this, took a picture of it, and posted it online. The, uh, the person who did this, who, who wrote that on the, uh, on the receipt, uh, her name happened to be on there, so she finds out about it. She complains to Applebee's. Applebee's fires the server, and that's only the beginning. That's, that's all just, just the, the, the ground level. After that, Applebee's completely mishandled everything from a social media standpoint. They started trying to delete posts. They tried to uh, backpedal. They tried all kinds of stuff. It was horrible. No matter where you come down on you know, whether the server was treated fairly, whether the customer was treated fairly, whatever, they really, really, really messed up in the social media area. They did not understand the culture and the language and the ideas that thrive in social media. Uh, more recently, just the other day, Burger King got their Twitter feed hacked. And uh, so they had to do some quick thinking and try to fix that. So these are uh, some, uh, some, some more takeaways. A, don't be stupid. Two, lock up your stuff. Don't be stupid. That's, that's just, that can be applied to so many things, but especially in social media, because when you're stupid on social media, everybody's going to know about it. Um, so, um, there are ways to handle even the worst situation, and, and Mariah, where did Mariah go? Uh, okay, Mariah, we're going to talk about this at lunch because she did something absolutely phenomenal where you take a situation that looks like it could have been really bad, not one dogfish had uh, watched, but uh, yeah, somewhere else, and, and she completely turned it around. Uh, it is important when you join, when you engage in social media to understand what the mindset is, how people are interacting, what they value. They value transparency and honesty more than anything else. When you blow it, own it. I blew it. It was a mistake. Sorry, my bad. These are not really difficult things to say for most human beings, but business is a little more difficult. But they, you know, how you handle those things, how you respond to those things does matter. Now, here's the frustrating part. We are living in a time where excuses just are not available anymore. There was a time when you could say, gosh, I want to write a book, but I can't get a publisher to pay me, or to pay for the whole thing. I want to start a business, but I don't have the capital. I want to do this. I want to get a message out, but I'm not sure how. Those excuses are gone now. And, and, and if, if you really want to kind of, depending on your point of view, be inspired or you know, shamed, take a look at teenage entrepreneurs. There are 14-year-olds that are starting businesses now. Nobody told them they couldn't. So there's no excuses anymore. And, and it used to be so easy. It used to be, oh, gosh, I want to do this, but I don't have the title. But I don't have whatever. So-and-so won't let me. And I know that frustration. You know, that, 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 that excuse used to exist. It no longer does. So as a service, to you, if there is something where it's like, you at one time said, I want to start a business, I want to write a book, I want to start a media channel, I want to do whatever, and now you realize that you really can't, and, or you don't want to, or whatever, and, and people are saying, hey, what about that idea? I'm, I'm offering this to you now. You can get the official Ken Grant told me I can't do it certificate. <laughs> all right? If all you need is that excuse for why you can't do something, Email me, tell me what it is, I'll fill in all the blanks and everything. Uh, tell me, and, and, and if, if, if it's a really big dream, I might actually charge you money. Uh, but for most smaller stuff, you can get kind of a generic thing, you can frame it, put it on the wall. When people say, hey, what about that idea you had? Get it. Ah, so Ken Grant said I couldn't. Okay, so that's, that's a service for me to you, that's all. It's because it's, I love. Um, so, Throughout the day, I hope that you will learn, you will connect, you will explore, you'll engage, you'll create, and you'll do. Oh my goodness, there are people I know 
who have come to these conferences. They've come to conference after conference after conference. And they sit and they just soak up everything. And they know this stuff. It's all there in their brain. And then they don't do anything with it. I encourage you, do. Create. Make things happen. Just go out there. And if you fail, fail. Fail with gusto. Do it proudly. Don't, don't worry about it. Because I can tell you right now, for, for whatever reputation I've got out there, there's, there's people like, oh, everything he does just uh, turns to gold, whatever. Baloney. I can point to the dozens and dozens and dozens of things that I've poured my heart and soul into that just failed. But nobody pays attention to those if you keep going and you strike on that thing that actually does work. We all know about um, Thomas Edison and the light bulb. What did he figure out? About a million ways not to make a light bulb before actually making it. And these days, the rules are changing so quickly. Things are happening so fast. You never know what it is. It, something that didn't work last week might work next week. Uh, I'm learning new stuff all the time. There's um, one thing that I used to tell people all the time was, uh, you know, follow a proportionate number of people. Um, so, you know, if, if you've got 200 people following you on Twitter, you should be following about 200 people. I mean, ideally, you know, people go and check that out. I just learned the other day about a congresswoman from Missouri who is breaking that rule, who says no. I don't have time to go through the whole stream. I'm very particular about who I follow. Now again, a week ago, I would have said this person was not playing well and maybe ought to reconsider their position, but I, I read it and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. The rules are changing all the time. As you're, uh, as you're going through stuff today, just think, how can I break this? How can I, how can I do this differently? How can I make a difference? And this is one example I want to leave you with this morning. Um, as you all know, a week ago Monday, there was a tragedy in Newcastle County Courthouse in Wilmington. Uh, three people <clears throat> lost their lives uh, to uh, two guards shot. Um, and this happened in a courthouse that many people who throughout the area visit regularly, go to regularly. And, uh, Wednesday night, a group of us were sitting around thinking, what can we do to make a difference? On Thursday morning, uh, a lot of these people were coming back to work at the courthouse for the first time since that tragedy. So at 9 o'clock Wednesday night, we came up with an idea. We put out a couple of things on social media. And by 8 o'clock Thursday morning, here's what we had.
So I encourage you today to use the tools wisely. Yes, grow your business, start your business, do cool things with your business, but more importantly, connect as people. When you do that, I think you'll see the results in your business. Um, a year or so ago, I was up in Lidditz, Pennsylvania, and uh, did a four square check-in at a uh, great little cafe, the Chocolate Cafe. Yes, you heard me right, the Chocolate Cafe. Oh. <laughs> and so out on Twitter, there's the message. I'm at the Chocolate Cafe. Anybody here from Browse About Books in Rehoboth? Anybody familiar with Browse About Books in Rehoboth? I hope so. Good. Browse About Books in Rehoboth sent me a message when they saw that I was there and they said, oh, you might want to check out Luke's bookstore there in Lidditz. And I thought, wow, that's, that sounds like a good idea. I turned around the corner, there's Luke's bookstore. I walked in, they said, how you doing? I said, fine. Somebody on Twitter just said I should come by. They said, oh, you're Ken Grant. <laughs> They've been following the Twitter feed. I now have a connection with Luke's bookstore and with Browns About Books that happened in 30 seconds, but has left more of an impression on me than any of the big chain bookstores out there. And so every time I'm in Rehoboth, I buy stuff at Browns About Every time I'm in Lidditz, I buy stuff at Luke's, book, uh, at Luke's bookstore. This is the kind of society that we're talking about. Where's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my in-laws live right by there, so, yeah. See, that's a connection, okay? <laughs> this is the thing with social media. You mention anything, I, I'm amazed, people are like, why do you post things on Foursquare? Why do you tell people where you are all the time? And it's simple. Number one, because other people sometimes show up there. Uh, it's free advertising for that uh, local business. I'm a huge supporter of local businesses, people. Um, and number three, you never know when it opens up these kind of, of avenues. I have had CEOs of major companies reach out to me because I checked in at a certain restaurant and they're like, oh, we were just there last week. What did you think of the pasta? You know, I, it's, it's, it's incredible the kind of connections that can happen. It doesn't happen overnight most of the time. I, I say that now and somebody's gonna prove me wrong tomorrow and that's fine, I hope you do. Um, it takes time, this is relationship building, it's just like anything else. But people are no longer looking for a logo, a motto, a big, ugly corporate building, they are looking for people. They want to connect to people. When I think dogfish head, I think people. I don't, it's some beer. But I know the people behind it, and that's what makes it special to me. That's what, and, and just last night, the queen, for like good stuff. Um, you know, but, but a restaurant, I mean, seriously, when you're going out somewhere, don't you want to go where people know you, where you know them, where you can have a conversation with the manager? Am I alone in this? Am I weird? Okay, two separate questions, but anyhow. <laughs> Seriously, engage. this is what it's all about. This is what people really, truly want. They want a good product and good service, and that they can get anywhere but they want a personal connection, and that's something you have to decide if you're willing to offer. So, how many people would identify themselves as newbies this morning? Good. How many people, uh, you've been doing this for a little while and you're ready to take it to the next level and explore some cool stuff? Awesome, this is great. So, this is, the, this is exciting because this is the first time I've been involved with a conference like this where they, and, and the folks at Dell Tech deserve a huge, huge thank you for all that they've done in putting this together. And they said, yes, we'll, we'll provide two tracks for people. So it's no longer a one size fits all thing. Uh, those of you who, who are saying, yes, I want to explore this stuff, I'm just getting started, you've got classrooms. For those that are ready to say, okay, I'm ready to take it to the next level, you've got classrooms. This is going to be a fun day. The lunchtime panel, I guarantee you, people much smarter, much more insightful, and much better looking than me are going to be involved with that. Uh, and that goes for most of the other classes. If you feel like getting stuck with me for a couple of classes, well, you know, uh, you know the disclaimer. Um, so thank you all for coming out this morning. Thank you for being part of this today. I encourage you to change the world. You can do it.